coronavirus. <clears throat> Sorry. <clears throat> Very important topic that we're talking about today, and that is, of course, the coronavirus. And um, <clears throat> I first want to start out by saying that anyone who's currently praising the Chinese government for their swift response and their uh, actions being taken against the virus uh, all need to look very deeply at themselves and, and realize they're making a huge mistake because it's actually the lax reactive uh, measures that have been taken that have led to the spread of this thing. Uh, okay, you can agree with me on that, right? Absolutely. Yeah. We're going to start out. I do have some inside information uh, that I'm going to be discussing with all of you. And there's a reason. I'll get into that in a minute. But um, I've got a whole bunch of notes. I've just got off the phone with some of my doctor clients, ex-clients in China. Um, and uh, there's some pretty interesting information. So before we even get into that, I do want to talk about the lax reaction that uh, we saw from the government. Okay, first of all, when this thing hit, the first thing that started to happen was people reporting this virus or this disease were actually arrested. Mm -hmm. Okay, we had crackdown on journalists, journalists who went to go and report on this, were stopped at the wet markets where this stuff had spread from by the police, asked to delete all the footage they'd taken. This is something that's actually happened to us mm -hmm. in the past in China as we've tried to go to certain areas. Um, it's pretty well known that if there's a sensitive area or a sensitive topic in China, you shouldn't talk about it. It should be the government that talks about it. That's why they don't let foreigners stay in areas that are close to minorities and things mm. like that, right? So <clears throat> people were arrested. Uh, you know, journalists were intimidated into not reporting on this when it first broke out, which, of course, doesn't help, you know. Um, the next thing is we finally have this big quarantine that's happening. There's now 13 cities that have basically been locked down. But, of course, Wuhan, the source of the virus, it's only just like yesterday or the day before they really like, OK, now we're going to quarantine it. And unfortunately, by the time the quarantine was actually put into effect, people had already start, started to travel all over on holidays and to go for the Chinese New Year. The timing is really bad for this thing. We'll get into that a little later. Um, <clears throat> so <laughs> what they uh, are doing now, the, the Chinese government is employing their tried and true tactic, which is to blame someone else and what they're doing now is they're actually blaming the local wuhan government and this is something that's going on where they're saying okay we need to focus the blame we need a scapegoat and the scapegoat's going to be the local wuhan government and it's so bad that i've even been pulled aside by my chinese relatives and told if you're going to talk about this don't blame the ccp don't blame the beijing government you must blame the wuhan government they're the ones who dropped the ball and i mean this is common isn't it yeah, I mean, this deflection thing, this is the problem, is that when you have a situation where a domestic issue is taking a foothold, maybe people are talking about um, uh, lost investments on ghost cities and property. Yeah. All of a sudden, it's it's now the government's prerogative to promote anti-Japanese sentiment. Right? Correct, correct. They always do this. The problem with this one is that it's too far-fetched to start blaming foreign governments. People are doing that now yeah. in China. They're yeah. talking about how... Um, the American CIA planted this virus, all that kind of stuff. But the government can't really latch onto that. That's a bit too far-fetched. So sure. what, what's the next step is they blame the local government. They're right? going to crucify some officials. <clears throat> They're going to lock them up. Some of them may get very harsh sen sentences, possibly the death penalty in some cases. My, probably not. But My maybe. problem with that, though, is mm. people are championing this in China, but also Westerners are saying this is a good thing. Put them yeah. on a cross. Put this Wuhan governor on a cross because... He mismanaged the situation. What they're failing to understand is, no, it is not his fault. No. Of course, there's some blame on him, right? Yeah. It is the central government's organization structure that makes the downfall of these situations yeah. so much worse. Okay, now, I did promise insider information, and I'm going to be dropping a bunch of it during this stream. But what I'm going to do first is discuss um, why I have insider information into what's happening. Uh, you can see a newspaper article that was taken... Well, a long time ago, probably 2013 or something, 12. I have been working in the medical field in China for, well, I worked in the medical field for about five years solid. Uh, I was training doctors. By training doctors, I was teaching them English, medical terminology, hospital etiquette, 
and rules and I got to see every single side of the medical system in Shenzhen, which is a first tier city in China. It's a big city. It's uh, it's on the same level as Shanghai and Beijing and Guangzhou. Mm -hmm. Those are the four big ones. Mm -hmm. So I got to go and train at the CDC. I went to go into all of the different uh, hospitals at every single level, from a small clinic all the way up to the biggest, most posh, advanced hospitals in Shenzhen. So I've seen how everything runs there. And of course, during my five plus years that I was training or teaching doctors, whatever you want to say, I made a lot of friends. So I've got a lot of clients, ex-clients that are doctors that I used to teach. And I also have a lot of friends who are doctors. And they are the ones who've been talking to me on WeChat. That's why I am able to give you this insider info as to what's going on on the ground. And the first thing that I can 100% confirm is that the an amount of people that are infected are way more than what's being officially reported. The reason I can say this is even as of last night, as I was talking to my doctor friends, they were telling me that confirmed in Shenzhen, just the one city, Shenzhen in Guangdong, there are 30 people who are in quarantine at the moment who have the virus confirmed, 30. The official figures as they stand today, see what uh, what's happened is there's like a, these update maps that they send out through WeChat and they have like an update that keeps updating as to how many people are affected. And right now they say in Guangdong there are 53 and in Shenzhen there are only 15. So according to the official data that's been released right now, there are only 15 people infected in Shenzhen where I know that there are 30 people. So that's just the tip of the iceberg. And remember, that's one city in Guangdong, right? The, all of the different cities are... There's 100 know, million people yeah, in Guangdong. Yeah, exactly. <clears throat> but every single figure that, that's being, busy being put out right now, you can bet your bottom dollar that they are playing it down, you know, giving you a lower number, just so that panic doesn't ensue, okay? This this is at absolute fact. This is coming from the, the horse's mouth, from doctors in Shenzhen that I know who are busy dealing with this. Now, it's... A very grim time for any doctor in China right now. And what's happened with my doctor friends is they have all been told that they're not allowed to go on holiday. Of course, right now is the um, spring festival, right? It's, Chinese New Year. it's the Chinese New Year. It's the biggest holiday. <clears throat> this is when everybody goes to their hometown. Largest migration in the world. And like, no joke, you might, you might not really understand, but the amount of people that gather and that travel at this time of year is unprecedented unless you've seen it yourself you wouldn't really understand just how chaotic and crazy it gets and just how many people are traveling together bumping into each other going to these big festivals together doing all these things together it's it's insane so the doctors are not allowed to go on holiday those who went on holiday already have had to go back unless of course they were in hubei mm -hmm. then they're like no you got to stay there um and what's even more concerning, and the thing that's really bothering my uh, my Chinese doctor friends the most, is the fact that they are not properly equipped. They do not have masks to wear, proper masks. I mean, we've got one around here. Um, what you want, at the very least, is an N95 mask, all right, which can help. But they're just using those typical surgical masks, which basically only prevents spittle from mm. you know you know going in and out. And um, they don't even have the correct masks. They don't have protective clothing, yet they have to still serve the public. So when you've got people coming in with a fever, the doctors have to deal with these people and they are up not close. protected. Like up close, <clears throat> obviously. So I'm talking on the clinic level, you know, hospital level. Of course, you've got the bigger hospitals where people will be properly, um, you know, protected. But there's a thing that's happening in China right now. Of course, it's it's winter right now. It's kind of flu season anyway. So people get a fever, and the first thing they're going to do is rush to the hospital. Okay, so if they are infected with this, they're rushing to the hospital anyway. So the doctors are afraid because they have to deal with people that are potentially carrying this virus, and they have no proper protection for themselves, which is a very dire situation because if all the, the doctors get sick, who's going to take care of the sick people? Correct. You know, so this is a big thing. Um, I was going to say the, I want to throw this yeah, in. Please, please. The most important thing is not masks. Masks are important, yeah. but 10 times more important is the uh, washing of hands with soap. Yeah. And that is a rarity in China. I've actually had someone I know just recently tell me that the first time 
was yesterday that they used hand soap to wash their hands, like almost like defiantly yeah. challenging me. Yeah, exactly. So that's an issue. And there's no soap in hospitals mm -hmm. and there's no soap in public bathrooms in China. Yeah. Unless you're at like a five star hotel or something. Yeah, no, it's, it's quite ridiculous. Now, the, here's the thing, right? <clears throat> uh, Guangdong, this, the province where both you and I lived, mm -hmm. okay, the one that is the home of Shenzhen, Guangzhou, Huizhou, etc., etc., etc. They um, have it's now most been... most populated province. Yeah, it's most populated. They, they were promoted to level one um, th level threats, mm. so like uh, health security level threat. But the, the thing about that is they were, you know, I've actually got a, a little picture of the, the threat level here. If I can find it for you, you'll just have to bear with me for a second. Um, they were elevated to this level before Wuhan. Mm -hmm. And Wuhan is the source. Okay, and this is again... The, I'm, I don't want to throw the blame at the local officials again, but this is just the way the government works, is they keep trying to play it down to try and make it seem as if it's a lot less serious than it really is, because that's how they uh, save face and that's how... Well, the, the way the Communist Party of China works is if the guy, in, if the uh, governor of Wuhan, right, mm -hmm. if he delivers the bad news and say, listen, we have a, a huge epidemic right now, he's yeah. done. Yeah. He tries to play it down. He tries to hope it blows over. He's also done if it takes off, right? So it's sure. a lose-lose situation. Yeah. Well, I mean, the thing is, social harmony, again, is like the most important thing right. in China. I'm just going to play some clips in the background. We'll eventually get to it. I'm just going to play some clips so that you guys can get an idea of what's going on. Um, These are from hospitals within China right yeah. now. <clears throat> with it, uh, from yesterday and today. Yeah, correct. So what you have is you do have people collapsing in the hospitals, you know, with this... Uh, disease mm -hmm. you know you have confirmed cases and if you look carefully at the footage you know if it's legit or not because if the doctors are wearing hazmat suits you know it's legit but what i want you to also realize is while the doctors are wearing those suits the people standing around taking photos and stuff are not mm. okay the potential for this to spread is massive well yeah. i mean it's it also stems from the lack of knowledge about how viruses and germs work yeah. and i i do ultimately blame chinese medicine at the end of the day traditional chinese medicine because pathology the idea that this microscopic thing that you can't see can affect you yeah. but it could be prevented with something doesn't sure. make sense to the, the lost generation of china yeah yeah exactly now we also have to talk about why the very late response to this problem caused a lot of issues and why it spread so far now is Basically, at first, they did not want to respond to what was going on, obviously, right? right. Um, they tried to pretend as if everything was normal. In fact, they even flouted this whole thing by holding these big banquets and things. There was a massive attempt at a world record for like the most amount of people having a banquet together, literally seven kilometers away, which you mentioned in your I video. It in my video. Yeah. Yeah. Seven kilometers away uh, from where ground zero hmm. for this disease was. And it was held like a day or two after there were 56 new confirmed this, cases. It's, the, it's very, very, very important to address the fact that it was done after yes. confirmed cases, yes. not before. Correct. So they know, oh, look, there is this very bad cases. disease. Yeah. It's spreading. We're getting more and more and more cases. And it's definitely, you know, spreading human to human. So what are we going to do? Let's get together and make the biggest human soup that we can you know where everyone's just going to have a good time and eat from the same dishes okay now you can see that's the the uh guangdong level one um you know that was what i was looking for earlier just to show that it's elevated to that level uh i'd like to talk about masks now this is a screenshot that i took uh this morning from amazon and the reason i know this is my wife actually ordered these masks to give to her parents because you know my parents-in-law are here visiting and they're about to head back to china um uh, although we'll see how that goes because if it you know if it gets very serious they might stick around for a little while same here yeah <laughs> it's not ideal but that's the way things go <clears throat> thing is okay she tried to order these masks and uh they're out of stock okay and then she went online, you know, with the, the Chinese forums and stuff to see what's going on. And there are literally people there doing Dai Go, which basically means parallel trading. They're giving people instructions on how to order from Amazon in order to send through to China. So what's happening is you're getting face masks being sold out in the States because they're all being shipped to China. But it's usually unscrupulous people who buy up all the stock and then go and sell it at a massive profit in China. 
But I just want you to realize that it's so far reaching that you can't even order something on Amazon right now. So it's temporarily out of stock. Apparently it's gonna take one to three months before they're available. You're even getting these signs coming up like, out of stock, shop for these in stock respirators. If you I told here. my wife a couple of days ago to buy her parents some because they're visiting, right? Yeah. To bring back to them, which uh, they're about leaving about the same time as your parents-in-law to go yeah. back, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And she's like, oh, it's fine. Like, it's in America, right? Sure. She goes on, everything's out of stock. Correct. Even in shop. Yeah, yeah. that's that's right. Um, mm-hmm. Sasha went to CVS mm-hmm. to try and get, you know, the N95. I mean, it is in LA where there's tons of Chinese people. Sure. So I'm assuming if you're in Oklahoma, it's probably not like that. Yeah. But like in big cities, it definitely is. Absolutely. And... The problem is in China, they're completely sold out everywhere. Oh, yeah, course. yeah. And People are making bank. You know, often if you watch, <clears throat> if you pay attention to my Instagram and stuff, you will see I often post these things of like the middle-aged uh, aunties and stuff going and <clears throat> taking all the toilet paper or whatever because it's free, right? right? There's that mentality of there's something there now. Take it all. Right. Take it all because yeah. it might not be there. <clears throat> so you are getting people who go in and buy the shop's entire stock. Yes. They hoard it or they try to sell it for a profit, one of the two. So very quickly, everything's sold out and it leads to a shortage of proper masks. Mm. So it, it is a big thing. Um, all right, let's, let's just move on here a little bit. Um, <clears throat> you know what's very strange though is that as far as spreading of rumors are concerned... Mm-hmm. You have while, to talk about that law first. Well, okay. Yeah, maybe you can enlighten everybody. So there's a, a very serious law in China. It's actually, I'm going to say it's fairly recent. Um, yeah. And it's banning the idea of spreading rumors. And with the influx of internet, like before, when I first moved to China, not everyone had the internet or computers. Sure, sure. But now everyone's got smartphones. Everyone has yeah. smartphones, right? Yeah. So with the internet came all these forums and Baidu and all these things where people could express themselves. Yes. So they needed to make a quick law and a very severely punished law to ban people from spreading rumors. And this doesn't cover anything that actually matters. It only covers stuff that makes the government look bad. Of course, it's uh, Mm. called spreading rumors and, you know, upsetting the harmony, social harmony, the balance of social harmony. It's a blanket thing. So they can apply that to anything. And that's what they were applying in the beginning. Uh, We got some screenshots that I'll be showing you at the end where you can see actual from WeChat that uh, that were pulled from WeChat. Um, Here's just some more footage in the background of more people that are being, you know, well, they've collapsed and being quarantined and either dead or dying, you know, in the background. Mm. We're seeing a lot of these come out of China. And the thing is, before anyone starts going on about our oh, fear mongering and we're trying to blow something out of proportion, or oh, maybe those are, are fake or something like that. Absolutely not. That's not the goal of what's going on here. First of all, it's very easy to verify that these where these images are taken because we can read Chinese and we can see exactly where mm-hmm. they're being taken. And also we can tell that it's current year. You know, what bothered me was that there were no confirmed cases in Huizhou, the city that I, yeah. that I lived in for so long. And then all of a sudden, I didn't ask for this. All of a sudden, I got four different videos of people put into bubbles in yeah. Huizhou ambulances. Sure. This is Huizhou, Shi, yeah. Huizhou yeah. city on it the same day. So yeah. if there's no confirmed cases, but I'm getting just friends sending me this stuff out their window, sure. how many actual people are getting this? That's the problem with the with social media at the, you know, at the moment. It's so difficult for the government to clamp down on yeah. it. They did try in the beginning, like I said, they were arresting people and they were deleting PR, journalists yeah. stuff, uh, etc. But this stuff leaks out mm. and this is all legit stuff that we're seeing at the moment. Right. Um, and it, you know, it's quite terrifying to know that this is going on. But at the same time, the government's constantly pushing this idea that everything's okay and it's, you know, it's only a few cases. And so people are not really taking it very seriously, which is even worse. Right. Uh, one thing that seems to be okay to spread rumors around is absolute rubbish ideas of why it was spread. Um, I got this off of um, Weibo. And, mm. okay. Weibo is like Twitter for Chinese yeah. people. Apparently, um, dogs are affecting people, so you must abandon your pets. Now, that's being spread around, and people are picking up on that, saying, oh, it's because of pets. We shouldn't have pets, so just abandon your dogs. That's one thing, and they're not cracking down on that. What they crack down on is they crack down on actual real information, and then they allow these stupid rumors to spread so that diversion, you know, it's all about people's attention being diverted. Another one is like this... There's Buddhist monks saying if you pray 108 times a day for 100 days, it's better than wearing a mask. You know, and that kind of nonsense is allowed to spread around and people are sharing that and talking about that rather than being like, hey. Must feel good to be a passive murderer. Yeah, exactly. It's it's really crappy. Um, okay, let's, uh, let's continue. Uh, there, 
are so many of these clips of mm. people being picked up by ambulances or whatever. I can't keep up with them. No, they're coming all the time. And the the fact of the matter is, by you can tell by the the suits that they're yeah. wearing, the hazmat suits, because it's a new design that you don't we haven't seen before. Right. It's very easy to to tell that. It's, I never saw hazmat suits in China. That's what's happening right now. Right. You can you can tell from that. Um, and then you can also just look around and see the other general public that are there are just not. Okay. Now I got to talk about this. There are so many people posting on social media on how they've escaped Wuhan hmm. with symptoms. You know? There's, it's like bragging rights. Yeah, it's like, look, I've got this. This is my medical report. I have like a fever and I got this and that. But I'm now on a plane to... Why would you brandish that? I don't know. These, It's really, really... Clout? I, I don't even, I don't even want to figure out why they're doing this. It's just stupidity. It's absolute stupidity. But what's what happened was okay. First of all, as, as far as this quarantine is concerned, um, you know, here's people. Oh, now I'm eating hot pot. I've just mm. escaped. They were really stupid on how it worked. First of all, they didn't quarantine. They kept on having these big banquets. In fact, uh, you'll see later if you can read Chinese. Uh, one of the things that I do a screenshot of is um, as of yesterday. Even they were posting. Oh, look, we had this show, and one of the dancers was sick, but she still showed up because she's strong and blah blah blah. They it's on still... purpose. It is propaganda. Yeah, yeah. The thing is, they still have these gatherings and stuff, right? Even when they know it's a big problem, even when other provinces are already like, and the rest of the world's like, hey, listen, stop. They still keep trying to push this like everything's fine thing, you know, to the point that it's actually detrimental to everybody's health, right? Anyway, they keep doing that. Then they decide, okay, we're going to quarantine Wuhan. Great. They shut down the train stations. They shut down the airports. They shut down all these bits and pieces. But then they tell everyone eight hours before, oh, we're going to be shutting down the roads. You won't be able to drive out. So what happens? More than 200,000 cars fled from Wuhan with filled with people, you know, and that's buses and things too. So you're like saying, okay, we're going to quarantine. So if you want to get out of here, get out of here. It's it's really ridiculous. I, can I say something real quick? Yeah, sure. Even after the quarantine happened, mm. I have a video. This is after timestamp yeah. video of people driving out. And yeah. the cops are giving them like thermal scans, like checking their temperature. Yeah. But they're still letting people leave. So where is this massive cutoff quarantine? Yeah, it's, it's what, tough. What about a little money to get through with your car? Yeah, of you course. You joking me? Yeah, I mean, look, here's another social media thing. And they're like, oh, wow, look, I'm, I'm on my way to Beijing, you know. It's like, uh, I've just escaped, lol. I'm eating, you know, I'm bats. eating. <laughs> no, not bad. <laughs> That'll and, come later. Yeah. No, so they're eating chow bean, you know, like the neural chow bean, you mm. know, whatever. Um, they've <clears throat> even got people that are bragging that they went to Disneyland, you right. know. So it's like literally people they saying. They shut it down now. But. Yeah, Disneyland shut down now, but all of these things you're seeing scrolling in in the the background right now are people uh, sharing their escape stories look where i am look i'm in shenzhen now mm. you know i drove to shenzhen or i flew here or i took the train there and they're bragging about it like oh i've got symptoms i'm coughing and stuff but i still managed to escape there's a woman in france who actually got tracked down by the chinese embassy in france because she was uh, bragging on social media that she had symptoms a fever and a cough but she took a ton of like Anti antivirals. yeah antiviral medicine so that her temperature dropped down and she managed to get past the temperature scanners and That's get wicked unhealthy by and, the way. and getting got into france and then she's po posting herself eating you know lunch or dinner in a french michelin restaurant saying like oh look you know one of the, one of the most recent ones was a couple that left their two children at the airport because their kids had symptoms and they just abandoned them and flew off yeah, I wonder, I, I'm still not 100% sure on, on the veracity of that, but perhaps, yeah. I mean, I wouldn't put it right. past them. I'm, I'm just trying to talk in facts as much as possible here because there is no point in fear mongering. What mm. we want to do is bring you actual facts of what's going on, okay? And actual facts is, number one, from my inside sources, there are way more infections that are being reported. And that's something that I think anyone who knows anything about China and how China works would know is true anyway, mm. okay? Number two, People are bragging about being, well, having symptoms, not necessarily being infected, but having symptoms like a fever and a cough, but still escaping from Wuhan to go to places like Beijing, Shanghai, etc., etc. And you should read the, the vitriol in the comments. People are like, go die. Or, you mm. hope you, you know, you wow. know screw yeah. your mother. You'll, you know, you stay in Wuhan, stay out of our Shanghai, whatever, you know, you're getting all that kind of stuff. <laughs> you know what I mean? Which is understandable because people are like oh look i'm on the road i'm escaping now you know this is where i've just ended up it's uh it's 
it's ridiculous. That's absolutely happening. Doctors are not properly protected against this. They don't have the right equipment. They don't even have the right masks. And uh, it's it's a very, very, very bad situation all around. All right, let's, uh, let's see what we got next on the list. Um, let's, let's just talk about the timing, okay? <clears throat> this couldn't have come at a worse time, but it could have been prevented immediately, right? Yeah. Here's the thing. Chinese New Year, as stated in the beginning of this video, is something you have to see to believe. Uh, nobody, anyone who d works in China or has anything to do with China, nobody wants to travel on the Chinese sort of, uh, what we say, infrastructure, you know, mm. trains or, or planes or anything during that time. It is ridiculous just how many people <coughs> move. Hundreds of millions of people all moving. And the whole point of this is it's very important in Chinese culture to, in fact, tonight is the night you get together with family and you have to have a family dinner. Okay. And it's people literally will go and steal bicycles in order to sell them in order to pay for their tickets back home at this time of year. It's like if you don't have your your stuff safely locked away this is when it gets stolen all the motorcycles i got stolen was around this, it's this time. time it's that time where people are so desperate to get back to their hometowns that they will resort to crime mm -hmm. okay and they will resort to whatever they can in order to get back to their hometowns so you have to understand this driving force something like oh you have a disease you should not go somewhere because you might infect other people is not going to quell that driving force people will escape in order to get back to their hometowns, even if they are sick. And they don't realize how dangerous, it, how dangerous that situation is. Mm. Uh, so that's obviously really contributing to, to what's going on at the moment. Um, okay, let's see. We, we actually have to now bring this on to the next part, which, well, you know, I'll, I'll play a little bit of this in the background, but we have to talk about where this, this disease came from. And before we get onto where it came from, we have to actually understand the origin of these kind of uh, pandemics and things like that and mm -hmm. it's it actually originated in china mm -hmm. the reason it originated in china is <coughs> china is the first place to domesticate geese all right so they're the first people to actually start living together with things like geese birds and certain animals so um, this was the first time ever that humans could kind of come into contact with these things like avian flu or, or whatever you know um, these diseases that are very easily spread now. Um, and so this is what leads to, to these kind of viruses breaking out. And the problem is that China has never really um, progressed from... Now, don't take me wrong here, but this is the absolute truth. When it comes to going and buying your vegetables and your meat and stuff, China has not progressed past medieval times, if you want to compare it to the West. There's no refrigeration... The majority of Chinese people, even in the fancy cities like Shenzhen and Shanghai and stuff, still go to wet markets, especially the older generation. Because in China, and it's a positive thing, it's a positive thing in the way that people believe that you have to eat fresh food every day. So what happens is they go to these wet markets. I'm going to just quickly, that's the French woman, by the way, I'll, I'll put it back so you can get some idea. I did put some footage in the background of wet markets and things so we can look at that. But... Um, People go to wet markets and uh, what they do is they get their fresh vegetables, like I said, that are bought in by farmers and stuff. There's no quality control. You don't know where the vegetables come from, mm. right? You don't know where the meat comes from, but it's always there. It's mm. always fresh. So you arrive in the morning, you buy your vegetables for the day, you buy your chunk of pork, you buy your chunk of beef or whatever it is, and you go home and you cook the stuff and you eat it that day. China does not have a culture of like keeping leftovers and eating it for days on end. It's like you finish what you cook that one day and then the next day rinse and repeat go or out just dump frogs yeah. out on the street yeah exactly just go out and uh buy your fresh whatever it is you're going to eat you know and cook it for that day so these wet markets have been thriving for hundreds thousands of years who knows how long it's been going on for but every chinese city has massive wet markets mm. doesn't matter how rural or how advanced and the hygiene levels in these wet markets is absolutely disgusting. Um, you know, you have live animals, although after SARS, they supposedly stopped selling live animals, but they still do. Oh, prove, prove yeah. that. Yeah, exactly. So anyway, you go in there and you will actually have a chicken or whatever slaughtered right there for mm -hmm. you. Okay, a big part of the Chinese 
cuisine and stuff is they like to give you pretty much everything. So they'll give you a little little bucket of the chicken's blood because mm-hmm. people like the chicken's blood. Yeah, the giblets. Eat, and... Yeah, the giblets. And you, so you get everything, you know. Just probably not the feathers. That's about all, you know, because they keep the feathers to do something else with. But you go in and you get all these things. And you can see it's called a wet market because the floors are always wet. Mm-hmm. Because the blood and all the various bits and guts. guts and crap that end up on the floor just get washed down drains. No disinfectant is involved here. There's no health standards. When people are dealing with the meat and stuff, they use their hands. Mm-hmm. So there's, they're not even wearing gloves, you know. Yeah, the, the butchers are... If you sit there and watch like a butcher, uh, you'd actually get quite sick just watching them because they do. You see like that lady over there? It's just like, let's pick up the meat with our hands and, uh, you know, sell it to whoever comes. And the passers-by, they will actually come and poke and prod the meat. So yeah. they're like, they'll be like, yeah, psh, no, this one's not good enough. I'll take that next one. You know, so it's all about hands-on tactile feedback. And everybody is, well, that fish guy's wearing gloves, which is a, you know. But it's the surprise. fish is getting scaled where it's, they're going to cook it with the skin on and it's touching the, the ground. Yeah, exactly. Right. And, you know, you, this is a kind of a common scene of just people doing very unsanitary things in public on the side of the road. Um so anyway, these wet markets are terrible, and it's about time China put an end to them. Um, if you know, you're going to act like a middle-income country, then act like one. Yeah. Now, the wet markets are what every single time this kind of crap happens, it's always traced back to a wet market. Okay, and the one in Wuhan, the reason why they believe it came from the one in Wuhan is not because it's a fish market. It, it, originally, everyone's saying like, oh, it came from a fish which is highly doubt, doubtful, you know. Um, but then they find out that that same wet market, like all the wet markets in China, was selling random wild animals. Rare animals. Yeah. Things like uh, Chinese koalas, things like wolf pups, mm. okay. Um, and this is something that I can attest to have seen, seen a lot in my time in China, is outside of restaurants even, even in Shenzhen, and you have to understand that when I use Shenzhen as a benchmark, Shenzhen is the best. It's the best of the best in China. You know, it doesn't get better than that. It's like saying Manhattan or something in America. It's the top of the pops. It's like that's your highest level of everything, right? Yeah. It's not like you go into rural somewhere, you know. Don't say Alabama. No, I was going to say Oklahoma or something. Okay. But if you if you go to some small middle of nowhere town, you know, sure people might not adhere to all the the, hands yeah okay they still yeah are sanitary and stuff but i'm talking about restaurants and stuff you know maybe it's not as as tight as manhattan downtown or something but i'm talking about shenzhen Mm -hmm. here okay where you walk into a walmart and you can buy a live turtle Mm -hmm. to cook you know it's just one of those things um so anyway this is shenzhen and i have seen outside of restaurants in certain areas things like snakes Mm -hmm. in cages to eat cats Mm -hmm. Um, random furry animals that I can't even recognize, you know, and anything you can think of. I've seen dogs, obviously. I've I made seen home. armadillos. Yes, yeah, pangolins. Pangolins. Um, various. Rats. Yeah. For instance, what you see in the background, this wet market's downstairs from my very posh apartment Downtown, in yeah. Shenzhen, in the middle of Lohu, actually on the border of Lohu and Futian, for those of you who don't know. Um, and there's just right there all this random meat no refrigeration no. um you know what i mean this is it was where... even worse right i lived in a third tier city this yeah. stuff was everywhere but the fact that you can see this in the most rich area of the richest city yeah is kind of insane right well if anyone knows uh shenzhen the the mixed city mall the mixed sea it was right next to that like literally like right where you there. Could buy louis vuitton yeah it's got louis vuitton or and a a tes- tesla you right. know and all that stuff is right there and then right next to it you can buy like a pig face, like you say. <laughs> it's it's just the way it is. So these wet markets are definitely the cause, the unsanitary conditions. But of course, it, it goes further than that. It's not just the wet market's fault. It's the inability of people to understand basic hygiene. Yeah, it's the devil's advocate argument, right? Yeah. If you go to Southeast Asia, wet markets are the way of life. At least in China, you have supermarkets as an option. Yes, right. Yeah. So that argument kind of falls on its face until you realize that when you go to places like Vietnam, we were in rural Vietnam not that long ago, right? Yeah, that's right, yeah. It was still very archaic in the way that they were doing things. Yeah. However, things were rinsed properly. Mm. I saw people washing their hands. Maybe it was under a spigot in a bucket, 
But they had soap there. Yeah. Right? right. They swept up after themselves and then cleaned it properly. Mm. So how is it that this very poor country is using very basic kind of ideas, you yeah. know, of sanitation, but China can't do that in a first tier city? Yeah. Right? I think it comes comes down to the fact that a lot of Chinese people are... Um, well, there's this whole reinforcement of how good Chinese culture is, right? Because that's how the CCP controls everyone. Is like China is the best. Chinese culture is so long in mm. history. So when people right. people believe in things like qi and mm, uh, TCM, yeah, all the TCM stuff like ah, oh, Tai Ru Chila, Lun right. Chila, this and that, and the next thing, they also believe that spitting is good for you to get the the bad things out your body and so on. And that because it's kind of linked to Chinese culture, it's not really looked down on. People mm. always defend it. Every single time I try to t tell people that, hey, in China, people are hocking loogies on the mm -hmm. floor of a freaking restaurant, you know, spitting the bones on the table, things like that. They're like, yeah, but that's good because in Chinese culture, that's, you know, good for the body mm. and stuff. You, you shouldn't c criticize their culture, et cetera, et cetera. But, you know, Europe was the same, okay? Mm -hmm. It was the Spanish flu that changed people's minds. And, and the plague. Yeah, obviously. But the, I remember specifically looking up the history of the Spanish flu, which, by the way, there's a lot of uh, speculation that it originated in China mm. as well by uh, a whole lot of Chinese laborers that were brought over during the wartime to, to do stuff, apparently. Can't confirm or deny. No, can't confirm or deny that, but it's, it's a possibility. Anyway, after the Spanish flu, which like infected 40% of the world's population or whatever at the time, something ridiculous, mm. um, signs were put up everywhere saying spitting spreads disease don't spit and people kind of stop doing it at that point right so china obviously never cottoned on to the idea that spitting and hocking up loogies in public and in restaurants and on the buses and wherever else is bad for you or right? leaving meat out in the open with blood and mixing animal parts together yeah. in an open hot environment yeah remember that last time we actually not last time one of the first trips we ever made through Guangdong we pulled up at that one market and the flies just wouldn't leave our bikes alone mm. remember that place how absolutely horrible it is you may have there seen maggots in the yeah food. yeah you could see in the background at some point a, a woman waving mm. a little wand with some plastic mm. bits on it that's to keep the flies off mm -hmm. you know this is a hot humid environment where meat is being sold Rots openly. Quick. yeah super quick um and it's just everywhere so it's it's not good so anyway the spitting is a massive problem, and this helps spread the diseases even more, right? And uh, you get public defecation and urination and stuff, but that's usually children. It's not, sure. it's not adults doing that, um, to be fair. You can see how the chickens are sold with all their undeveloped eggs and things inside as well. And this is everywhere in the yeah. country. Yeah. You actually cannot escape this. Mm. Th this footage that I filmed Maybe over Shanghai? here. Shanghai? I don't know. This footage is from Shenzhen. Right. Okay. Um and again, see, there's the chicken blood that she's giving the chicken blood um, in a little baggie. Mm -hmm. So it's like, here, take your chicken blood. Which is whatever. Yeah, we've killed your chicken. Here's your chicken blood. But what I'm trying to say is like, okay, she's not wearing gloves, nope. right? No one is. There's no, no one's... soap. There's yeah. buckets of parts. Yeah. This is, they use the same there's utensils. Sludge covered. Yeah. Um, what I'm there's like <laughs> dishes. Yeah. What I'm trying to say is that the, the level of actual hygiene is something that needs to be addressed. Very poor. And what people don't understand is that a lot of China is still in the medieval ages mm. when it comes to things like this. I know people will accuse me of going out and looking for the bad to film in China when I film. I'm not looking for the bad. This is just stuff I see all around me. These are things that need to be addressed. And anyone who wants to come along and try to pretend as if this kind of thing isn't going on in China is either an apologist or a straight out liar. This is a huge part of Chinese culture, getting your fresh meats and stuff from the wet markets. Another huge part of China is not being sanitary. It's just how it is. Anyway, let's um, continue on. Uh, they're, they're just like shucking oysters or whatever. Um, and again, I have so. no problem with markets like this, yeah. but they're not kept properly that's mm. the problem yeah. they're enclosed environments that are not washed right 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 yeah okay anyway apparently our stream is chugging and it's under attack by the the oh. ddos attacks i'm guessing <laughs> sorry for the uh chugging guys we're going to see if we can um we can fix that up let's see i'm going to ask some help for uh for mm -hmm. my other mm -hmm. my other moderator here yeah okay please do all right. Are we back on track here? Can you guys hear us? Yeah, let me get rid of... Yeah, you, you mm, keep okay. talking. I'm going to... I'll mod. 
All right, hopefully you guys can still hear what's going on here. Um, okay. The thing is, back to the whole rare and wild animal thing, uh, there is unfortunately a huge amount of uh, influence from Chinese traditional medicine or TCM, traditional Chinese medicine, and superstition that lead to people eating strange animals. Um, and it's just part of the way China works. I've been offered on occasion to eat all sorts of random strange animals that I would never consider eating. You can even see a cat in a cage behind me. Mm -hmm. That is a cat for food. It's not a pet for those of you who are curious. Okay. <laughs> um, it's really one of those things. If you walk around in China and you walk around in the slightly more rural areas, look, Honestly, if you live downtown in Shanghai or you live downtown in Shenzhen or not downtown in the more posher areas like, let's say, Nanshan or something like that, you might avoid seeing these kind of things. But if you actually explore the city you're in in China, uh, you will very often come across these more sort of, um, uh, how can we put it, like gross animals for sale to eat. Mm -hmm. I mean, let's talk about Hui Zhou. Didn't, didn't you have to eat ants that time? Have to? Well, yeah. I mean, I was just being nice, right? Yeah, sure. Yeah, I ate ants. Mm -hmm. uh, Mother-in-law brought it back. They actually weren't from Hojo. They're from Inner Mongolia. And the special ants. The special she ants. She cooked them in eggs, and it just tasted like acid in my mouth. <laughs> Big battery acid. Horrible stuff. Yeah. Okay, Gross. well, look. There are a lot of traditional remedies in China which um, are very questionable. I mean... I think one of the, the biggest things, of course, are aphrodisiacs, mm. things like uh, rhino horn or tiger penis or whatever it is that they, they eat for aphrodisiacs. And it leads to people eating wild animals. There's a, I mean, just imagine if your uncle is telling you how good it is to eat a, a pig's brain because it's going to make you smart. Right. And you grew up that way. You're going to eat pig's brains, which is very bad because that can Prions. lead to, you know, parasites and whatever being transferred. And you have your entire family thinking that it's good to eat the wing of a whatever animal because it's going to help you with this or to eat the this part of that animal because and it's part of your culture to a point where if someone just comes with a bizarre idea up to you and says, "Hey, you know, maybe if you eat the snout of a of a bat, it's going to help you um, smell better or something. You know, then you're like, okay, why not? I'll give it a try. Just mm. because you've grown up in the situation where eating random animal parts is supposedly good for your health. You know, what bothers me is that in the beginning, there were signs that my wife's generation, who grew up believing this stuff, kind of grew out of it. They're yeah. like, is there... then social media kind of made it trendy again. Yeah. So be like, look at everyone, I'm eating this and this and this. And then, yeah, a lot of people are going to demonize them on social media. Yeah. There's all these other people that are inspired to go try it as well. To exactly. the point where there's actually restaurants, and I've been to one in Lofushan, yeah. that only specialize in rare and endangered animals exactly. for high clients. Yeah, endangered animals they are... They do not participate. I mean, Lynx, that's, that's, that's the thing. Yeah. Uh, the more rare the animal, the more uh, expensive it is. Mm -hmm. Uh, absolutely. And that's just a part of, especially Guangdong, where we're mm -hmm. from, but all over China. If mm -hmm. somebody becomes rich, they tend to start to go after these sort of things. Now, in the background is some footage I took um, of the Chinese New Year festival. It's called the Flower Market, and that, that was actually taken in Guangzhou. Mm -hmm. And you can just get an idea of the scale of, you know, possibilities for... Uh, transmission. You've got so many people in one place all bumping into each other, all kind of in together. And to be honest, that's that's part of the joy of the Chinese Spring Festival for, for most Chinese people is they call this now, which just means like lively and fun. Yeah. And people seek it out. I, I mean, I filmed this, right? I couldn't stand being there because you're being herded along and pushed and shoved and people are, you know, coughing on you and whatever. And it's just... The way it is, but you can get an idea of some of the scale of what's going on in the background there, of how many people are crammed into a single place in so many areas. Now, uh, to China's credit, they've decided to shut down mm -hmm. a lot of these events at the moment. So things like these big flower gatherings, temple gatherings, things like that have now been, you know, shut down. Mm -hmm. They're not supposed to be happening anymore. Of course, they still will right. um, in certain areas. But, um, you know, this this is how things get out of hand. All right, uh, we have to talk about the new blame trend that's going on. Um, mm -hmm. And I'd like you to weigh in on this. Sure. We've been seeing a lot of people, Westerners specifically, mm -hmm. um, I don't know, all over Chinese social media, trying to play down this pandemic, potential mm -hmm. pandemic. Mm -hmm. I mean, trying to play it down by saying, oh, but in America, more people die of flu every year. 
Right. Now, what's your take on that? Um, well, we see this all the time with mm. the, the Wu Maos, the internet trolls, right? What they'll yeah. do is first admit something is not real, yeah. but then when it becomes real, then they have to save face and sure. blame it on someone else. What about us, right? Yeah. So in this case, we have, um, this is just a new string. And I feel like it's almost a script that people got. Yeah. They're busting out all these numbers. Thousands of people die every year uh, from influenza in America, right? Right, right? Which is true. The elderly mm -hmm. die. You know, people that don't protect themselves against the flu can die. Sure. Right? Sure. The issue with that is they now compare it to China where they say, oh, China only has like 60 deaths per year from the flu. I'm not going to use whataboutism to, to rebel no, against no. that, but you got to be kidding it's me. absolute nonsense. It's absurd yeah. to think that. It's just because those kind of cases aren't reported. Now, I know this for a fact again because of my uh, experience dealing with doctors and my wife being a doctor and all that sort of thing. When it comes to these kind of deaths, people, they go, they get their medicine, they go to the hospital, they get their, um, you know, drips or whatever for the flu. They go home and then they die. It's a family matter. It's not like recorded under census. This person died of flu or something. They right. just, you know, oh, they were old and they couldn't handle it and they die. Mm -hmm. It's not an official, you will not get an official number on any of these things. But of course, there's an, a massive amount of people dying of flu every year. And in fact, this is what's definitely led to the underreporting of this uh, coronavirus in the beginning is mm. elderly people just randomly dying. They're probably like, oh, it's just the flu. It's a bad cold. Sure. You know, rather than linking it to the disease. We don't even have to. It's just it's a it's a tactic. It's a ploy yeah. to take it to take this away. And that, that's the issue I have is that first they say, oh, it's not actually happening. You guys are over reporting this. Right. Yeah. Then it happens that everyone goes ape in China within yeah. China. Yeah. Then they say, actually, the mortality rate is super low. This is going to blow over. We trust the government. Yeah. Right. So what's going to happen when this actually does blow up? That's the worrying thing. Right. Absolutely. You know, look, there's stupid things going around now. I've got a link. I got a couple links in the description. Um, the first link, of course, is to Sea Milk's um, original uh, coverage of Thank you. of this situation, which you should definitely watch yeah, if you haven't. Just quickly, I did, I basically made a video about why this happened yeah. in in depth. So check sure. that out. Uh, the second is there's there's another smaller uh, China YouTuber it's called Prime in China, and he made a video on this ridiculous situation where people are trying to blame Americans for spreading the virus mm -hmm. because of course every time something bad happens in China the initial reaction is to blame foreigners mm -hmm. and so you have people saying oh it must be America that you know engineered this virus and mm -hmm. you know made it happen so that's worth a watch it's something you should definitely check out but um, I want us to, to just get back to what we're talking about right now and um, just the uh, Sorry, bear with me. I have to look at my notes here. <clears throat> I just want to reiterate how how bad this is. Now, my my doctor friends are, of course, only in Shenzhen. Another thing that they told me is that Dongmen, which the Dongmen Chu, which is like the neighborhood or area of Dongmen and Nanshan, are both under very strict monitoring at the moment because there were cases that were reported in those two neighborhoods slash you know areas. Mm. Um, and of course, that's something that's coming straight from the mouth of the doctors. People living there, I, I just don't know why people are so brazenly going out and just being ridiculous. There's that clip from a couple of days ago where in Guangdong they were, um, you know, I think it was in Guangzhou, they were doing mm -hmm. that, that whole interview and people are like, we don't need masks, we've got the government, we trust the government, the, the government cheering. will take care of us, you know, and that's an unfortunate situation is people have too much trust in a government that constantly, constantly lies to them by playing down the severity of, you know, situations. Mm -hmm. you know? And and it's something I said a lot before is when you don't understand that something's dangerous, you'll think, you know, everything's okay. If someone gets murdered next door to you and you never hear about it, you'll think you live in the safest neighborhood in the world. Right. But if you know about it, like in America, they're like, oh, so many people die of flu. You're like, you know, this is a thing. I've got to watch out for this. But yeah. if you're not warned about this stuff and you think everything's fine and hunky-dory, you will make mistakes unnecessarily, you know? It's, mm. This is the, the unfortunate um, situation in China. Now, uh, let's move on to some questions because I think if we can just point this uh, conversation in the right direction, we can help some people, give, give them some proper answers. So sure. do you mind uh, reading out what we have on Super Chat so far? Sure. <clears throat> you're going to have to open them up there. I'm gonna to have to open them up here. Okay, excuse excuse the setup. Um, okay, let's uh, let's get this one over here. Okay, it's uh, 
It's quite frustrating to work on a system like this. Just pop that out. I'll read it. Okay. There we go. Okay. Um, Josema Fernandez Barrera says, if CCP admits 20 deaths, the reality would be much, much worse. Looks more thinner, dude. Stay awesome. Yeah, absolutely. That's, uh, that's something that I can confirm to be the absolute truth. You know? Next. Right. Tell it, Serp. EJ okay. Hose, keep going. Uh, my mom says I'm special. Keep going. Okay. You guys are fantastic, and thank you so much. Thank you. Um, right. Hearing this live stream or working on my Toyota Celica, continue with the worthless whips, <laughs> guys. Thanks. Appreciate Thanks, it. Will. Absolutely. Keep up the great work information, but no, uh, but no sense in socializing or hate speech. That's what we do. Yeah. Now this is the this is the thing is I I do not want this to be sensationalist nonsense. I'm really just sharing what I know from people that are there on the ground. Mm. And of course, being able to read Chinese, when you see all these WeChat articles like we're showing in the background, it blows your mind, you know, that this kind of stuff is going on. No one's talking about it, you know? Right. Um, it's incredibly frustrating. There are videos of, of uh, you know, a doctor in Wuhan crying because he can't go home for his hometown thing and he doesn't have enough protection. There are too many people. Um, they're now pleading, they've got pleas going out for medical um, supplies that they don't have, of right. course. And it's just way, way worse than people are, are trying to say it is. Mm. And that's, that's something that I, I really have to hammer home here is that it's in the government, Chinese government's interest and even Chinese people's interest to play this down. Mm -hmm. Because it is a massive loss of face because this could have been prevented. One hundred percent. And let's just say that it it's not that serious. Let's just pretend that it's not that serious and only um, less than 100 people end up dying from this thing. Mm -hmm. It still could have been prevented that like less than 10 people died. It could have been that if from the beginning it was taken seriously, things were quarantined. That's, that's what pisses me off you know? so much about this. How Look at how swiftly China's dealing with this. Yeah. You're buying into the propaganda. This could have been dealt with from the day one. Yeah, I mean, this this thing started in December, okay? We're talking a month ago, and uh, people knew about it back then. That's it's, on the government side now. Yeah, absolutely. Totally. All right. Uh, um, next. Yeah. Um, American in Shanghai, should I try to go home ASAP or just follow normal precautions? Look, that's, that's a tough one to say. Um, again, I do think that there's no point in panicking. Mm -hmm. If you follow proper hygiene procedures and stay away from very populated areas, especially places like wet markets, I do believe that you'll be okay. It's not like all of a sudden everyone in China is going to be affected by this thing. It's not going to be that way. But it's people that are uneducated, have too much faith in traditional bullshit, to be quite frank, um, and believe the, the lies of the government, if I can put it that way, that are going to be at the most risk. Because if you know and you're educated and you're like, look, disease spreads through transmission, you know, coughing, can get in your eye. Okay, wear, wear sunglasses when you go. Wear mm -hmm. a proper mask that can, you know, prevent this. Wash your hands. Mm -hmm. Don't touch your face, right. you know, when you've been outside. Make sure you constantly wash your hands. You're probably going to be fine. But you see... That's not going to help the uncle that's spitting a loogie that's contaminated with this stuff on the street in front of you and a kid rolling around in it or, Correct. you know, walking barefoot or trying to pick their nose or whatever it is and catching it. Those are the people that are at risk or the people that are, are just following the party line, mm. you know? Agreed. Okay. Um, I notice uh, we can answer that in the podcast. Yeah, maybe. yeah, yeah. Uh, been a in tough times. Thank you, Ted. Yeah. Uh, in China, 25 people have died from novel corn, uh, coronavirus and another 835 people are sick with confirmed uh, cases, according to Lancet Friday from PBS. Yeah, the problem is, okay, here, here's something that uh, where we can offer a little bit more insight. Not only uh, am I talking to people in the medical field, on the ground, in Shenzhen at the moment, we've lived there for a long time. Everything that you're seeing in every other media outlet is just regurgitation of like the little bits of drips and drabs that are coming out of China. And they have to rely on the official numbers from the Chinese government, mm. which are a lie, just like the GDP. Mm. Okay. Oh, and if anyone's going to say that that's some conspiracy theory nonsense, no, they've actually revised their numbers for their GDP in 2018. And something like 13 of the provinces had to like nail it back by a lot it's like 30 percent here and there the gdp numbers that come out are false for the same reason that these deaths and infection numbers that come out are false mm -hmm. and that is because each local government has the incentive to make their little province their little area look good because that's the only way that they can get promotion okay that's the only way that they're going to get actual um 
uh, get ahead in the in the Communist Party. Mm-hmm. So if it looks like their province is doing badly in the GDP or in this infection thing, they get kicked down a rung. Mm-hmm. You know, it's mm-hmm. kind of like you screwed up. It's like getting a warning at work. Agreed. You know. Cool. Scroll down. Yeah. Keep going. Um, I'm a student nurse, and the first thing you do before and after seeing each patient is wash and sanitize your hands. And the Chinese didn't the Chinese invent soap? Uh, you know, I actually have footage of myself getting an injection mm. for a tetanus shot in the the clinic, and the nurse isn't wearing gloves, mm. you know, and they didn't wash their hands either. And this is quite common. Like I said, as advanced as China appears to be on the surface which you know in a lot of aspects they are if you look at the skyscrapers Mm -hmm. the high-speed rails all this kind of thing um society is still very much behind when it comes to very basic things like personal hygiene Mm. you know it really really is right you know uh when i was working in guangdong part of when i was training the doctors actually one of the big parts of my course was to tell them that you can't wear the same clothes for like a number of days in a row Mm. Um, because, you know, Chinese people that I know don't sweat that much anyway. So, you know, their, sm- their clothes don't smell bad. So they'll end up wearing the same t-shirt for like four or five days in a row, maybe, you know, longer. Mm-hmm. You notice that, right? Mm-hmm. There are people that are much of course, more uh, conscious about you got to understand like that I'm, general- <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm generalizing here as I always do. And people never really understand that. But it's so much of a thing that when I was training a group of doctors, they would come in four or five days in a row because it was every day of the week. Right. And they'd be wearing the same T-shirt and the same pants. Right. And I'd have to tell them, look, when you're working in the hospital overseas, at least mix it up. You don't have to wash mm. your clothes, but like every day, at least try to wear a different shirt or something. Mm. Otherwise, people will perceive you to be, you know, unsanitary. Sure. You know, I'd have to teach them very basic. These are doctors, okay? Mm. I'm, I had to teach doctors some very basic personal hygiene, things like brushing mm. their teeth as well. You know, things like taking a breath mint, you know, mm. things like this. Because... It's just not part of Chinese culture. Maybe the more sophisticated up and coming people, but I'm talking about your average everyday middle aged person mm. in China is not going to be following the same level of standards of personal hygiene as people do in the West. Sure. You know, simple. Cool. Okay. Hold on. Keep going. Mm-hmm. Keep going. Keep scrolling. By the way, I want to say, anyone who's worried about like ordering things from China, I don't think that's a worry. No, I wouldn't worry it's about that. It's not gonna. This, the virus shouldn't survive, like you know, being shipped overseas. Hopefully. Right. Just keep going. Yeah. Just only in, in people. Right. Greetings from a Finnish nurse. Okay, so I have to go back. And this up. is medical related. Okay. Um, we lost you. Yeah. Sorry, we're we're getting back up. Um. Oh, oh, there it is. Yeah, okay. Greetings from uh, Equal. Greetings from a Finnish student nurse. Our healthcare system is already actively preparing and treating Corona as a pandemic, even though it was not named as one. And that is why these countries are apt and capable of handling this. They're preventing it. That's, That's correct. That's the difference. It's not just smear cover-up campaign. No, it's not. Okay, and here's here's something that we really, really have to talk about and how they dealt with this situation. Mm. Rather than quarantining people, they sent them home. Okay, and this this is what happened during SARS as well. Yeah, they send people home, and that's it's quite typical uh, when it comes to like mental health and mm. stuff in China. It's about the family has to take care mm-hmm. of the problem, and maybe it's because they don't have the they lack the infrastructure to take care of a lot of people or whatever it is. But they were sending people with confirmed symptoms home. Mm. So you know what's happening here is people go home and they infect their family, mm-hmm. right? Because they're at home. You got that case, patient zero in Dalian. Mm. Okay, the first person, Dalian, that you guys don't know if you don't know where that is. It's in the northeast of China. Mm-hmm. It's a port city up there. He was diagnosed in Wuhan with this coughing and fever and everything. And he was told to go home. Mm-hmm. So what's the first thing he does? He hops on a plane and flies to Dalian and becomes patient zero in Dalian. It's this incompetence that leads to the spread of this. Mm. So rather than taking someone that's like, look, there's a high likelihood that this person has it. Let's quarantine them and keep an eye on them. It's like, no, just go home. Yeah. You yeah. Know? That's the issue. Yeah. That is the big issue. It's the way of dealing with this. It's so, so incorrect. Mm-hmm. All right. Scroll down. Yeah, let's we'll do a couple more. Yeah. Um, how fast is the new hospital supposed to be? That's supposed to be built in six days. Six but they're now days. saying it's only going to take 16 hours. And everyone's really proud of that. When I think that should be a big pockmark, 
yes. on how this was dealt with. Should have been done. Why didn't you make it first then? Yeah, yeah. A month ago. Yeah, a month ago when this was becoming a thing. And you start to see the CGTN, which is the official Chinese um, you know, media, coming out with all this. Uh, look how quickly we're building this mm. thing. We're going to be able to house a thousand people, etc., etc. My WeChat Again, was saying, like, I'm so proud to be Chinese. We're building this hospital so quickly. Yeah. How about having that kind of facility available in the first place? Yeah. Especially since in Wuhan, <laughs> that's where the SARS and all that, they, they have a SARS like research facility mm. supposedly there. Again, sorry, in the background, you can see the, the guy with the turtle. This mm. is another thing you see on the streets. I've used this footage a lot because mm. obviously I filmed it. And I'm asking him, like, why are you selling this turtle? He's like, oh, you can use it for medicinal tea mm. or you eat this part of it or that part of it. And of course, um, this is my sink, by the way. Oh, yeah. You that was my maid. Mm -hmm. I walked into the my kitchen and she's mm -hmm. just boiling a live turtle. <laughs> I was yeah, like, what yeah, the yeah. hell? Yeah. Yeah, Ooh. that's that's it's nasty. Obviously, mm. we're not we don't not going to show. That no, footage, we just showed but, the beginning. Um, you know, the thing is, it's it's common for people to go out on the streets, buy a random wild animal from a guy on a stick mm. or whatever, and then just go cook it at home. Mm -hmm. um, and so, where did that turtle come from? Who knows? That was that one was from a wet market, I think. But yeah. they probably dug it up on a construction site. It's what usually happens. They when they uh, break ground. Yeah. They find a lot of these turtles under the ground, and then they go sell them right outside the construction site. Yeah, that's why that guy guy kind of yeah. looked like a, a thing. So, I mean, th this is, again, this, this whole lack of hygiene, the lack of quality control. Because, once again, if you go into, like, a, a supermarket here, and you buy a chicken, mm -hmm. it's been cleaned. Mm -hmm. Sure, animals all come from the same place. It's a living, breathing thing that gets slaughtered and cleaned and, you know, you end up eating it, you cook it, right? But in China, they don't have the quality control. Here you've got battery farms, okay? And as inhumane as they are, we don't, we're not going to get into this argument. The fact of the matter is that there are quality controls. The way the chicken is slaughtered, the way it's packaged, the way it ends up in the supermarket, you can be pretty sure that it's not carrying a pathogen or anything in it, mm -hmm. okay? It's already been cleaned. But in China, you're dealing with um an actual random animal that mm. no one knows where it came from could have been dug out of a pit toilet you don't know yeah. and there it's being sold to people and they take it home and they kind of prepare it themselves or it's chopped up on the side of the road right. for you on the concrete of the street where a thousand other things have been chopped up and then it's just given to you you know right. what i mean right yeah you want to do one more yeah let's do let's, let's do the rest of these quickly mm. they're the same all right. Traveling to Taiwan for the next week for the first time should be concerned. Taiwan's got their head on their shoulders yeah, about this. I wouldn't be worry okay. too much. Remember, Taiwan has no incentive to hide the numbers. No. In fact, they've got incentive to to um, inflate the numbers of anything else. Because I know they won't, but they have that incentive. Mm -hmm. So they have the incentive to be overly like, negative. negative and report on this a lot. Mm. Because... Of course, they're kind of still at civil war with mainland China. So if they're like, oh, China messed up, they're sure as hell going to show everyone. <laughs> yes, you know what I mean? So, so like, oh, look, here's another confirmed case. <laughs> yeah. You know? Keep um, yeah. Uh, Taiwan actually just banned the, the export of masks so they have enough for their own citizens. Yeah, it's about Which time. makes sense. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Keep going. Sorry. Sorry if we didn't get to all of these, but um, yeah. for the sake of brevity. Yeah. Do your eyes need protection? How likely would this become a problem in the U.S., Thailand, Vietnam? Well, there's a very good um, anecdote for this. You know, there's a very famous doctor who's actually quite well known for, you know, the whole SARS thing. Mm. You know, he's was like an expert on this. Mm. He went to Wuhan to see how um, easily this could be contained. And he went there and he was like, this is not a big deal. We can contain this easily. And then he went back to um, <laughs> Beijing. Was mm. it Beijing where he's from? I think it's Beijing. Whatever. I believe so. Yeah. And he caught the virus. The guy who's saying it's easy to, you know, take care of it and make sure it doesn't spread actually caught the virus. He was wearing masks and everything, but he actually got conjunctivitis in his eye mm. and he got it from his eye. That's mm. at least what he says. But apparently he's uh, on the mend and he's like got enough energy to post Weibo and stuff. That's his own words. He's like, see, I've got enough energy to post on social media. I'm fine. So you see, we can control it. But I find it very ironic that the one guy who's trying to tell everyone that, hey, it's easy. It's not going to, it's not going to spread. It's no big deal. Gets it himself, you know. 
and he got it through his eye, according to him. So eyes, definitely. Think about it. If someone spits in your eye, your eye's going to absorb that very quickly. Membrane. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's, you know, probably worse than, you know, Washing hands is it. the worst, though. Okay. I mean, I mean, it's the most important thing. Right. Um, I think we'll probably wrap this up real quick. Yeah, okay. Let's see if there's a hidden secret down there. Okay. Okay. All right. Can we just get one normal question? Because I think it's unfair. They're coming in like... Just grab one. Just random one. Yeah. Okay. I'll do a rando. Um. entertain the crowd okay i will i can promise you guys if you want to keep track of what's going on i will continue to post to my instagram i don't yeah to see milk as well i do not want to make a big thing out of this i don't want to become a running commentary channel on the coronavirus i just thought it would be uh important for people to know uh from i i thought it would be irresponsible for me not to share the insider info that i've gotten from the doctors that i used to teach you know mm. who are contacting me with this information and of course i do have a lot of insight with my wife being a doctor and she mm -hmm. still of course is in touch with everyone and the fact that the doctors are are petrified at the moment is something that you really have to look at the fact that the doctors are so scared of this mm. and so worried for their own well-being you know it's serious when the doctors are like that mm. you know even though doctors remember are all government employees mm. they're all fed the same bullshit every year about mm. how the government will always look after them and you know they do doctors get incentives they get like a year supply of oil and rice and stuff it's it's a real thing it's still like a holdover from the socialist communist mm. stuff they get they get all their like perks they get all their bonuses they get told that everything's fine even they get told if the economy collapses it doesn't matter because you've got a stable government job you will always be okay so you've got people that have got a lot of um i don't know uh, respect for the government people that have got a lot of faith in the government and yet they're still scared enough to tell me all these things at great risk, and that's why I'm not releasing their names because people are getting arrested for yeah. spreading rumors, but at great risk to tell me about these things, about how scared they are, how badly prepared they are, that they don't even have N95 masks to deal with sick patients coming in to their clinics, you know? There's no barrier. Um, okay, your yeah. last normal question is, what is what are the chances that this is going to become a massive problem in the rest of the world? Uh, it's tough to say, and unfortunately, there's a, a, a problem at the moment where whether we like it or not, the rest of the world will have to deal with China's incompetence when it comes to dealing with things like this. Not only diseases, but the it's fact... It's not a domestic issue anymore. No, uh, but the fact that, for instance, they fish all the sea, the, the fish out of the seas around mm. China, they have to go abroad and fish all the fish out of the seas, you know, of your coast. It's things like that. The fact that the demand for traditional Chinese medicine has decimated the rhino populations and pangolins and whatever else, you know. Because the government doesn't do anything yeah. about it. Because they... If not actively promoting it. Exactly. So China's problems are always going to be the rest of the world's problems until China grows up mm. and starts to admit fault, which it never will, unfortunately, under the CCP, because they can never do anything wrong. Um, of course, it's going to be a problem. If you've got people that are posting on social media how they managed to escape while having these symptoms to places like France, the fact that we've got uh, confirmed cases in South Korea, Japan, uh, the USA, like, you name it, there's, you know, confirmed. Meanwhile, mm -hmm. they arrest the people that broke the news to try to spread awareness about this deadly virus. Exactly. You have to understand what you do. Just with. get that through your head. Yeah. I mean, that's all, it, literally the arguments over there. Yeah. So, of course, it's going to be a problem. I think it's up to other countries to be vigilant and to be very careful and set up the correct measures at the airports, temperature scanning. Mm. And this is something that I noticed during the SARS outbreak, because although I wasn't there for the first SARS outbreak, when the swine flu thing happened in 2009, that second SARS outbreak, in Shenzhen on the side, on the mainland China side, they were incredibly lax. There was, there was almost nothing. But when you walked into Hong Kong, They've got all the temperature scanners they were scanning with, you know, one of those infrared mm. things. They have like, you walk down an infrared camera is looking at everyone to see who has a high temperature. They were pulling people aside all the time, giving them individual checks. Mm. The people checking you were wearing the proper gear to protect themselves from, you know, contracting diseases. But it was the Hong Kong side that was doing all the work. The China side, they were doing nothing. Absolutely nothing well, to try. Yeah. 
to try and stop the spread. So you could just walk through the border, but it was the Hong Kong side that was, you know, vigilant. vigilant. And I think it's constantly going to remain the responsibility of the rest of the world to mop up China's problems, because unfortunately right now, China is not well equipped enough to deal with it. There's no liability. No. So I guess that's pretty much it, guys. Um, I do appreciate you joining us. Thank you, Simok, for coming on and helping me me with this, because this is... uh, like I said, the information is just coming in pretty hard and we'll fast. We'll keep you guys up to date as well. Yeah. And uh, uh, look, I don't want this to be a bad thing. And I, I sincerely I hope sincerely <laughs> hope that all my Chinese friends and all their haters and all the um, other random YouTubers that are always trying to expose me or whatever the hell can realize that what I'm trying to say here is I'm trying to um, spread awareness, but from a good place. I want people to combat this. I want you in China uh, to stop spitting on the damn road when there's things like this going around. Stop these bad hygienic practices. Stop blowing your snot rockets around. And I've got footage. People always like, how dare you show that? So disgusting. I filmed that like that old dude snot rocket that I use sometimes. I filmed that in Guangzhou. I've got another one that I filmed in Shenzhen. I've got these from all over the place. I got a lot of them. And if I made a compilation, it would be absolutely disgusting. But these are people in first tier cities, not even in the rural countryside, doing these things, right? And it's normal. It's my, something you'll see. My heart goes out to the educated young people that have to live in that environment because yeah. they're the ones that are fighting for their lives right now to stay healthy and they have to see this stuff going on around them. It's it's just ignorance and it's a lack of preparedness. So be hygienic if you're not already. Um, if you're unsure of what to do, and you're in these situations. If you can get a hold of an N95 mask at the very, very minimum, N95, okay? If you can get something better, get something better. Wash the hell out of your hands, yeah. stay out of crowded areas. Yeah, for a I while. mean, freaking wear those little latex gloves if, if you, you can, to. if you can get a hold of them, disposable gloves. And uh, yeah, stay away from wet markets and, and places, crowded yeah, crowded areas where this, this thing may occur. Uh, look Best after, of luck, yeah, look after yourself and your families and. Mm-hmm. Um, Uh, Until next time, you know the drill. Stay awesome, guys. Uh, And uh, yeah, (laughs) hopefully by the the next time you see either of our faces, things have improved and we can actually move on to something a little bit more positive. Thanks, guys.